it's the Rossum Vegan Gal here and today I'm doing one of my healthy living topics and this one I call longevity how to achieve it in mind body and soul and I took some of this information from um, a magazine called healing our world and it's their longevity issue that I have right here and I will have a link below to Hippocrates website and you can check them out. This magazine is offered for free. They will send it to you for free. If you are an organization or can distribute it, they'll send you a box of them for free. And they are a health institute, a natural health institute in uh, southern Florida. And if you've never been there, it is a beautiful place. I have been there. And the beautiful grounds, great food, wonderful people. It's all a complete package. It's really nice. So when we think about longevity, you know, longevity can mean a lot of different things, but just to say my own take on it. Um, so, you know, when we talk about longevity, something that lasts a long time. And when we're talking about ourselves, when we talk about um, the mind, body, and spirit, you know, you take care of something, it's going to last longer than if you don't. If you abuse your body, you abuse your mind, abuse your soul, abuse every, if you abuse everything around you, then it's not going to last. I mean, you could, you could see that when people, you know, I always gave the example, would you put chocolate syrup in your gas tank? Is it going to run? No, you want to give it the best fuel, hopefully. I mean, if you don't care so much, maybe you give it cheaper gas, but you want to take care of it properly. If you take care of it, you know, a car that you take care of will last a long time, longer than most that you don't take care of. Same thing with us. You know, if we take care of ourselves, yes. You know, time moves on and we do change and we may not always look maybe as youthful, youthful as we'd like to, but we try our best and if we do make changes and we can adjust ourselves, then yeah, we could, you know, be, be youthful or hang longevity. You know, the mind, you know, a lot of times the people, the mind goes and it doesn't stay healthy and you have issues and, and memory problems. Or the body, if you don't do activity, and same thing with the soul, if you don't take care of your spiritual self, then you'll also have issues there as well. So I want to talk about some of the things in this magazine. There were some articles here that were really interesting, talking about how to achieve this. So um, I wanted to uh, just share with you some of this, because I think it's really good information. And there are a few different articles here, and I'll mention... Um, the names of them, and this is again from the volume 35, issue 4. So if you want back issues, Hippocrates can send you those. So this was an article from uh, Liza Pitsirilis, I can't even pronounce her name. So she talks about what it means to be ageless, is it a physical or mental state of being, is it a state of spiritual awareness, or it's a combination of all three. So um, it says here she's... Uh, time to, we, to shift our beliefs around what it means to age and how we feel about it. In Western culture, they pay, play a strong emphasis on the physical attributes, but um, it also has to do with your emotions, your mentality, and your spirituality. So, um, you know, you, you, you don't have to rely so much on your physicality, but yes, doing physical activity will also be very good. And if you have an attitude, I think that's what I always say, an attitude of gratitude, that's important. You're always thankful. You think young, you know, that's going to be this, have the same effect on you. And she gives here some tips. She says here, number one, think ageless, be ageless. So um, if you think that way, if you have, if you change like your brain, you know, when you think certain thoughts, it makes you think a certain way and feel a certain way. Yes, in time you may change and your skin maybe is not as youthful, but you can, you could remain, you know, ageless in your mind. Um, and the mind, like we have a power to change things by, by our thoughts. So, um, and here it says that our beliefs about aging can either interfere with or enhance our stem cell function so that it regenerates or declines. I never knew that. Um, and this is according to, I think, Bruce Lipt Lipton, author of Biology of Belief, who's best known for promoting the concept that DNA can be changed by our beliefs. Very interesting. So when we change our perceptions or beliefs, we send different messages to the cells. So they can be programmed. Um, so that's very interesting that you can that you can do that. Another thing is the next thing she mentioned is four keys to an ageless body. Uh, you know, free radical damage uh, can speed up the aging. Um, then inflammation, where the blood vessel walls lead to degenerative disease and increased aging. Excess sugar, 
which um, sticks to protein or fat, leading to advanced glycation AN, which is pronounced or stands for AGE, and damaging all body systems and can contribute to disease, and then also stress. Stress is like the number one that I would say, because a lot of times you can eat the healthiest foods, you can live in the most pristine area, but if for some reason you're stressed out all the time, it's going to make you sicker than anything else. That, that can kill you just as much or more. So what it says here is that the long-term effects of physical, mental, or emotional stress are very damaging. Long-term exposure to stress hormone cortisol can shrink parts of the brain, damage blood vessels, and increase blood sugar levels, heart rate, and blood pressure and contribute to chronic inflammation. These four damaged cells and DNA wear down organs and systems and damage the vascular system that delivers blood and oxygen to the whole body. So whole foods, nutrients, stress reduction techniques like yoga, meditation, or relaxation, stuff like that, um, all been proven to address these issues for a healthier and longer life. The next one is align with, you know, having some kind of spiritual or religious connection. That's very important too. Um, because we're really, you know, whether you think that this is true or not, we're really a, we have a body, but our, our soul is housed in the body. Our soul is the main part of what we are. So it, that, the physical just ends eventually. The soul goes on forever. So, um, so she mentions here two things with like connecting with nature and stuff like that. But for me, I'm a religious person, so it's more about religious studies and connecting with higher power and, and the, the one above, the creator, and, and learning. And uh, that for me is very important. And that we have that kind of connection and the community, if you have a community that you want to connect to as well. Now this other article, um, The Longevity Lifestyle, from Tom Fisher, uh, RN, and Darlene Malvasi. So, um, so they talk about here some aging accelerators, things you want to stay away from. It is alcohol, it's the fastest age accelerator, I would have to agree, fast food, uh, toxins like heavy metals, uh, mercury and lead, pesticides, or persistent organic pollutants called POPs, high stress, which I just mentioned, uh, constant negative thoughts and attitudes, yes, we, I just mentioned attitude too, that's going to make, you know, if you constantly think that way, and if you speak it to other people, you're just, you're just um, adding fuel to the fire, you've got to change your makeup of what you say, like, say it in a positive way, instead of saying, oh, I have no time today, say, I I'll find the time. Or, like, I heard something from someone who said, uh, it was actually a rabbi, said, instead of saying you missed, like, let's say I missed the bus, like, oh, I'm late, I missed the bus, say, I'm early for the next one, so you're changing your brain, that attitude, it's much more positive, it makes you feel better. Um, the other thing is lack of moderate exercise. Now, I don't do intense exercise, but for me, walking is the best exercise, or stretching, things like that. And uh, what else they say here? Um, let's see. Uh, what they recommend, based on some research that was done, I guess, on centarians, is um, eating f good food, which be fresh, organic, raw, and living foods. Yes, I'm a proponent for all that. I don't eat that exclusively. But yes, eating fresh, raw, if you can make your own sprouts and you eat things that you grow from your own garden, that's the best too. And uh, keeping a positive attitude, we mentioned that. Exercising moderately, not smoking or drinking excessively. Uh, living independently, meaning you don't have to be, you know, living independently doesn't mean you don't have people around you, but it's just that you could take care of yourself. Uh, having close bonds with other people, family, friends, that's important that you make that kind of contact. Um, staying mentally active and learning new things, that's also a great thing because, you know, if you keep your brain sharp, it's always creating new synapses, so you're always learning new stuff and it keeps it, keeps it going, keeps it active. Um, so... So what they say here is a large body of research indicates that oxidative stress, free radicals, contribute to process related to aging, and that vitamin and antioxidant enzymes play a fundamental role in uh, defending the organism from oxidative stress. So um, let's see. They also talk about different nutrients that help uh, support the body. So for example, uh, coenzyme Q10 is good for longevity of the heart because the heart is a muscle that pumps blood through the body. And through the circulation of our oxygen-rich blood is crucial to sustaining life. So cayenne pepper is actually great for improving circulation, but not everyone maybe uses it. But maybe you should use this little pinch if you're not used to it. So um, every cell in the human body has CoQ10, which is a substance that provides energy to cells. There, and it can be found also in things like almonds, green and blue algae, avocados in moderation. 
Um, so those are some other things. And omega-3 uh, fatty acids, like flax, chia, and hemp seeds. So those are other good sources. And then what other nutrients support the longevity of the muscles? So protein, as you know, is an important uh, building block of muscles. And a plant-based protein is the protein that, you know, they mention, and I also agree. So they include proteins like uh, sunflower, pea, buckwheat sprouts, algae, nuts, and seeds. Uh, also, magnesium is good for muscle support. Things like kelp, almonds, legumes, fenugreek sprouts, avocado, and leafy greens. Then they talk about longevity of the bones. So supported nutrients for the bones include calcium, magnesium, strontium, vitamin K2, and vitamin D3. Calcium is found in almonds, aramay, seaweed, figs, all leafy greens, mung beans, and lentils. Strontium is also found in root vegetables. Um, vitamin K2 is found in natto, which is fermented soy, chard, and parsley. Um, and then as far as vitamin D, although they, they recommend the best sources to get some sun exposure, it can also be found in bee pollen, fenugreek sprouts, shiitake mushrooms, sprouted sunflower seeds, and wheatgrass. And also uh, resistance exercise are good for maintaining and building the bones. Uh, then they talk about what's the nutrients for longevity of the skin. Uh, water, drinking water, they say, number one. And then uh, improves your skin's elasticity. And estaxanthin is a super, super antioxidant. It's very beneficial and it can be found in algae. So the blue-green variety, red peppers, and carrots. Also another accident, antioxidant, I should say, vitamin C. It draws out damaging free radicals from the body and promotes collagen production. And collagen is the foundation framework of all skin tissues. So some foods high in vitamin C are green leafy vegetables, citrus suits, and yellow and orange peppers. Then about longevity of the nerves. So the brain and spinal cord makes up the nervous system, which is the control center of the body. So vitamin B1, B6, and B12 play a role in keeping our nervous system healthy. Good source of B1 is sunflower seeds, flax seeds, legumes, and garlic. B6 is found in sunflower seeds as well. Pistachio nuts and avocados are also good source of B6. B12 can be more challenging to get. They say you can get a little bit in B12, B, uh, B12 in wheatgrass, buckwheat and fenugreek grass, and also almonds. And uh, so that's, you know, a minimal amount. Then longevity of the hormones. Uh, the hormones are chemical messengers that help maintain energy levels, mood, weight, and fertility, and some sources that help. With this are avocado, uh, holy basil, uh, flax, and chia seeds. Also nutrients to support longevity of digestion. Digestion is an important integral part in attaining optimal health. It involves a process where food is broken down and nutrients are extracted for energy growth and repair. There are four components for aiding the digestive process. The first component is fiber, which helps bulk up, bulk up the stool and helps keep waste moving. Fiber also acts as a prebiotic, which feeds beneficial bacteria. Fiber can be found in bean sprouts, hemp, flax, and chia seeds. Another component is omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, which provide lubrication to keep food moving through the digestive tract. These essential fatty acids can be found in flax, chia, hemp, or coconut uh, oil where, when appropriate. Uh, I prefer to use the whole seeds, actually, or coconut. I prefer to, refuse, prefer, to use coconut butter instead. Another component is probiotics, which help in building the bacteria in the gut. Things like uh, fermented foods, kimchi, sauerkraut are great choices, or you know, like kefir, you can do like a yogurt, uh, a coconut water kefir. Probiotics also supplement, um, uh, I'm trying to think of some other probiotics uh, I didn't mention, um, I can't remember them at the moment, but actually it's prebiotics, so those are all for the probiotic foods. Lastly, enzymes help in breaking down the foods we eat to aid in the absorption of nutrients. Enzymes are found in raw and living sprouted foods. And what nutrients can support the longevity of the eyes? Eye health is of utmost importance as we age. Many people can attest to the decline once they enter their 40s. Raw green vegetables supply the eyes with vital nutrients such as lutein and zeaxanthin. These help sharpen vision and support the tissues of the eyes. Um, also, uh, leafy greens like sprouts, spinach, kale, turnip greens, collard greens, and romaine lettuce. Also, DHA, which is uh, also from, from algae. So it seems like the biggest theme is eating lots of greens for sure, uh, I would have to say. Uh, also supporting the longevity of the lungs. Um, they mentioned eucalyptus oil rids the lungs of toxins as well as strengthens their functionality. And now they don't say, I don't think you ingest eucalyptus oil as far as I know. You probably rub it on your skin. But it can be uh, irritating, so you might not put it directly. I don't know how they say to use that. It doesn't say here. Bee pollen also is good for lung function. Then uh, longevity of the kidneys. Kidneys function to filter waste products out of the blood. They help to keep the blood stable. Drinking pure water flushes out toxins. Also cucumbers that have a high water content. Um, they're loaded with essential minerals, which uh, make them great for the kidneys. 
Nutrients to support the longevity of the liver. The liver, which helps in the process of eliminating toxins and fat. They say garlic has the ability to activate liver enzymes that aid in flushing out toxins. Grapefruit and sprouted grains, such as millet, buckwheat, and quinoa, also help the liver detoxify. Lemons and limes, high in vitamin C, also stimulate the liver to increase enzyme production. And then finally, what are nutrients to help support the longevity of the brain? So keeping the brain healthy in life is crucial. Boosting brain function and memory involves creating good flow, uh, blood flow to the brain. So things like blue-green and, and, and green algae, broccoli and dark leafy greens. Higher levels of vitamin E is associated with less cognitive decline. So things like nuts and seeds are good sources or great sources of vitamin E. Avocado, flax, chia, and hemp have omega-3 fatty acids, which are good fats that also help with brain function. So um, overwhelmingly is to keep stress at a minimum um, and uh, try to enjoy your life and eat healthy foods. As you see, there's a lot of foods that you might already be eating and not realizing they're very good for um, all these different organs in your body. And um, let's see, also, um, this is from Longevity Recipes. I'm not actually going to read the recipes, but this is from uh, Zainab, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name, Z Fisher. So she talks about how the free radicals are atoms or groups of atoms with an odd paired number of electrons and can be formed when oxygen interacts with certain molecules. Their chief danger comes from uh, the damage they can do when they react with important cellular components such as DNA or the cell membrane. membrane excuse me. Free radicals can affect our longevity. Common food sources of free radicals come from chemicals as pesticides and herbicides, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids such as corn, cotton, seed, peanut oil, fish oils, rancid oils, and heavy metals. So you want to stay away from those. And uh, what you want to do is stay away mostly from the standard American diet, which is including all that. And what you want to do is incorporate more um, things that are antioxidant, uh, things that have phytonutrients, chlorophyll, vitamins, and minerals. So um, she, if you get the magazine, you can get the recipe she has here. She has some different recipes for quinoa, uh, cauliflower tabbouleh, an avocado carob parfait, so that's a nice dessert, a garlicky. Um, lemon garlicky tahini and zucchini jicama salad. So those are kind of like, like longevity recipes she came up with. And she mentions here too, vitamin C is an antioxidant which is great for the skin and the adrenal glands. Um, great sources bell peppers, green leafies and sprouts. I think we mentioned that too in the other article. So those are just some good information. Um, another thing is if you're into saunas, if you have an availability to go to, a, to use a sauna, a good quality one. Um, I know what properties they have them. I forget the name of the um, kind of sauna you can get your own actually for your home. That's good because it helps you sweat and sweating helps you eliminate toxins um, and, and we want to get those out of the body so that's very important. So I, I hope this information is something you, are, you would definitely uh, look into as far as for your own self as far as what you can do. Like I said you know you may want to take down notes and Say, oh, I haven't been eating greens lately, so I need to incorporate more greens. And maybe you make them blended. If you can't eat lots of them at one time, blending them is a way to, you know, eat more concentrated amounts. You know, like if you weren't going to eat a whole head of lettuce, if you blend it up with other vegetables and make like a blended salad type thing, you're apt to have more because uh, you're, it's more concentrated instead of chewing it all. Some people can't chew as much. So... You know, think about all these things and try every day to add something else or, or use something different. You know, mix something up in your salad with sprouts and seeds and, you know, avocado and peppers and, you know, all these things that are really good for you. So that's what we want to do by incorporating this all for our health. It adds to our health. It also adds to the health of the planet, the longevity. You know, the more we're eating healthy food, it, we're nourishing the soil too when we grow things the right way. And when we eat the food, we're getting, we're getting all the benefits and all the nutrients. So I thank you for watching. It's the Rawsome Vegan Gal.